Sure, it's the time of year that we love to spend outside, but it is also the time of year that it's time to come inside and important to check your body for that tiny little creature that just wants to make a meal out of your blood. Yeah, you might think that the harsh winter we had on Delmarva killed off a lot of ticks. The truth is extreme temperatures do not kill ticks. In fact, it's just the opposite. Experts say ticks survive cold winters by hiding under tree bark and dried vegetation. It keeps them warm. On top of that, the longer the cold weather spells, the more time ticks have to breed. Now, we certainly had a long cold winter, so experts believe this season will be bad for ticks. We can always hope. Now, we're all familiar with the dangers that ticks carry, in particular, Lyme disease. Now, you may remember just last summer, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said that the number of cases of Lyme disease jumped tenfold from 30,000 to an estimated 300,000 cases a year. That makes Lyme disease the most common tick-borne illness out there. And just like we're learning about its prevalence, we're also learning that the bacteria that causes Lyme disease is nothing new. A biology professor studying a juvenile tick found in a 15 to 20 million year old amber fossil discovered a bacteria in it that to this day, that bacteria causes Lyme disease, which is often misdiagnosed. I think in the old days, you had, you know, achy joints and this, various types of problems, headaches, uh, neck aches, uh, things like that. And I bet that a lot of those were caused by undiagnosed Lyme disease. And the professor believes it's not just Lyme disease. He thinks there are additional diseases that have also been around for much longer. Yeah, and Jimmy, we know that Lyme disease can cause fatigue, headache, muscle ache, joint aches, even swollen lymph nodes. It's a disease that's often spotted with the presence of a bull's eye rash like this. Lyme disease is certainly a serious condition and symptoms can last for years. But now there's a new concern a tick-borne disease called the Heartland virus. And it was identified four years ago, and since then, the Heartland virus has killed two people and infected eight others. They may be small, but a tick's bite can come with big consequences. They can cause a lot of damage. It's in the spring and summertime that Dr. Kathleen Zachary says her patients start showing up with symptoms that could stem from a tick bite. And it looks like she'll be seeing more of the same this summer. Already, Zachary says several patients have tested positive for the tick-borne illness Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. But what she hasn't seen yet, a case of the Heartland virus. You know, a tick crawls on you and then it bites you and then it spreads the, the bacteria and, and that's how you get the disease. A Midwest Department of Health official says a man older than 65 died from complications of the virus, which is believed to be spread by the Lone Star Tick. The department says the man had a history of recent tick bites and spent a lot of time outside. Until now, the disease was only known in Missouri and Tennessee. Its victims so far, all white men, all over the age of 50. The symptoms include fever, fatigue, headaches, muscle aches, loss of appetite, nausea, bruising easily, and diarrhea. Because there are no vaccines to prevent tick-borne diseases, the best line of defense is prevention. Experts say if you're going to be outside, put on insect repellent, wear long-sleeved shirts and long pants, and when you get home, make sure to check for any ticks or tick bites. If you feel sick after you've been bitten by a tick, you need to let your doctor know. That's the only way they'll know to test you. Now, the health department says there are no drugs to treat the Heartland virus, and it's so new that tests to help doctors diagnose the disease are still being developed. Now, as you know, you need to wear protective clothing. According to the CDC, you might want to make sure that that clothing has been treated with permethrin. Now, as far as checking your body for ticks, there are certain areas where they tend to hide. According to the CDC, they include the armpits, behind your knees, in your hair, and in the groin area. Now, if you do find a tick, the CDC recommends using fine-tipped tweezers to grasp the tick at the surface of your skin. Make sure you don't squeeze it. Pull the tick straight up and out. Don't twist it for fear of breaking off the mouth and it's staying in your skin. Well, what about attacking the ticks before they even have a chance to attach? Well, you can do that with something called a tick 
tube. We found this ID on practicalprimitive.com. All you need are recycled toilet paper tubes, dryer lint, and permethrin insect spray that does not contain any DEET. Here's the, here's the deal. The first thing that you want to do is spray the dryer lint with the permethrin insect spray. If you don't have dryer lint, you can just use a cotton ball that works just as well. Make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area before you spray it, though. Spray for about a minute or until the dryer lint is moist enough to have changed color a little bit. Then you want to turn over the dryer lint, do the same thing on the other side. You then want to allow the dryer lint to dry for at least two hours. And when it's finished drying, go ahead and stuff each toilet paper tube, leaving a couple of inches empty at the end of each roll. Now, what you want to do is place those tubes all across your landscape. The idea is for mice, rats, squirrels, other rodents to pull out the treated dryer lint and use it as feathering for their nests. The treated lint should kill the larva and the nymph ticks. Now, according to Practical Primitive, this will break or slow the ticks life cycle without harming other rodents. It's good. So it's a really neat deal. You need to try it. Now, if you missed any of those steps, we're going to post those to WBOC.com. All you have to do is go up to the right, click on our picture. That is pretty neat. It is. So that was the ticks, but Jimmy, it's also mosquito season. Oh. Yeah. Maryland's Department of Agriculture has already determined that on the eastern shore, there's what's called a monster brood. And this year, there's a new breed of mosquito and a new, very painful mosquito-borne illness that has officials on high alert. Now, we mentioned it earlier. If you've ever purchased a good mosquito repellent, you probably noticed the word DEET on the label. DEET was developed by the United States Army following its experience of jungle warfare during World War II. But before you grab that DEET-based mosquito repellent, consider using a natural option instead. Research shows the main ingredient in commercial mosquito repellents not only leaves a bad odor, it can damage brain cells, cause reproductive disturbances, and can have harmful, uh, harmful interactions with medications. So. What about some natural mosquito repellents that are proven to work just as good or better than DEET? There's no need to suffer long-term and serious health consequences to ward off pesky mosquitoes. Instead, choose a natural alternative that's proven to work as effectively, or in some cases, more effectively than DEET. Try catnip. You can drive cats wild and make mosquitoes run in terror. An Iowa State University study shows the essential oil in catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET in repelling mosquitoes. You apply it topically. Neem oil also works, which comes from the plant that grows in India. A study by the U.S. National Research Council shows neem oil more effectively repels mosquitoes than DEET does. Get some lotus flowers. Research shows they're natural mosquito repellents and also helps kill mosquito larvae. And since lotus grows in the water, you can use it in backyard ponds or in other water features instead of something that's applied topically. Some natural, healthy ways to keep you from getting bit this season. Okay, here's another idea. Mix the essential oils from catnip and neem together with an unscented moisturizer. Then you rub that on your skin for a deep free way to protect yourself uh, when you're heading outdoors. Now, always be sure you do a 24-hour skin test just to make sure you don't have any sensitivities to any of those oils. Well, Jimmy, what if we didn't have to worry about protecting our cells from mosquitoes at all? Wouldn't that be that nice? That would be a dream. <laughs> What if they didn't bite? Well, researchers in Britain say they've produced, lab-produced mosquitoes, so they only create male offspring. And guess what? Male mosquitoes don't bite. The scientists had to damage the X chromosome that the father mosquito would pass along to its offspring. As a result, the only mosquitoes that would hatch would be male. One scientist who helped lead the study was quoted as saying, once modified mosquitoes are introduced, males will start to produce mainly sons, and their sons will do the same, so essentially the mosquitoes carry out the work for us. The research is still in the early stages, but scientists hope this could be a cheap, effective way to eliminate malaria. Well, there's a lovely new development yeah. that could certainly come in handy if you got to sleep outside. Can you imagine? The bug bites you'd get after just one night. But what if you slept outside for a year? Well, that's what one teenager did, no matter what Mother Nature brought his way. And we're going to tell you why he did it next. Well, Mother Nature may not have faced that teenager, but the sun, the cold, and all of the other weather we experience on Delmarva can really do a number on your driveway. Find out how seal coating can help protect it. Delmarva Live, we'll be right back.